Hey, what's going on everybody? Just a quick preface. This is the first time Dan's been on camera for longer than just jumping in for a set of a bench press. So it might go a little something like this. I'm not sure what to do with my hands. Uh, it'd be good just to hold them down by okay. your side. Yeah, great. Well, we're real happy with um, with what was going on. And uh, at the end of the day, um, so make sure you guys bear in mind, enjoy the video. Thanks for watching everybody. Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you guys' day is going well. Obviously this is a video. We tried to do a live stream, but the software was not cooperating. So we decided to go with this for the first time, work out the kinks and get back to you with the live 253. So this is pre-recorded 253. It's just as good. We're gonna be talking about me and Dan. If you haven't already known who this guy is, his name's Dan, AKA the Iron Eater. He's one of the good friends of mine, a brother forged in iron and a happy co-host of this new series. What we're gonna be talking about today is his interpretation and approach to weight training, and then my interpretation where he's been and where we've gone progress. He's been lifting for a little over five years. I've been taking lifting seriously for probably about seven, but I've been lifting since 2009. We've both been through the struggles, been the ups and downs, seen basically what we're gonna prevent for you guys, getting the most actual benefit from your time, because we've been there on the long road, the bumps, the bruises, all that kind of stuff. You can linchpin off all of our struggling to get that much more success. So Dan, what is your approach to weight training? What's your mentality? What's your sort of rep and set range? What's your typical day look like? Oh, well, I prefer bodybuilding. Um, 10, 12 reps, six to eight. Uh, sets vary. Uh, I work with a coach, Dustin Buys. Um, he pretty much lines me out. Uh, the biggest thing to, that we work on together is consistency. It's consistency of meals, it's consistency in lifting, it's making sure your cardio gets done. Exactly, that's that's one thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna like halt it up right there. Consistency with anything you do, even if it's rep range and set range and nutrition, it, the only thing that's gonna work is what you consistently put down on the ground. I like the rep range. I've trained with him before. I'm sure you guys have probably remembered a video we did way back in we training. Although we did my style, his is considerably different than mine. I do upper lower split. What's what's your split right now? Uh, it's five days a week. Uh, chest back, day off, arms, shoulders, then legs, and then it's a day off. So it, it's a little bit more complicated with complexity. That's where you kind of get the tendency to break that consistent. But once you see the results, and Dan is, has definitely seen the results. Um, since we are doing a recorded video, I can put his progress pictures on here, which is great. So hopefully you guys take a look at them on the screen right here. Dan puts in some serious work. He puts up some serious weight with these. So with his rep range and the set range that he has specific, what would you say you're going for? Are you going necessarily for that strength and that endurance or more, more over like the pump? Uh, I prefer pump. You know, we've talked about this before. Uh, Mass equates strength, strength equates mass. So no matter what route you go, the bigger you get, the stronger you'll be and vice versa. So really, really dial it down at the end of the day, guys, is consistency. That's that's a big thing. He's saying basically no matter what way, what path you go down, it's always gonna get to that same result. But it, it, it really comes down to what makes you happy and what can breed that consistency. So Dan likes to focus on the pump. Obviously, if you guys don't know, the pump is all that blood flow going into those muscle spindles and those muscle fibers, engorging it, increasing that size. With proper nutrition and rest, that increased size becomes more muscle and strength in the gym. And then with my interpretation, you guys know we train upper lower split. Basically what that means is you come in the gym, you're doing everything above the waist, everything below the waist on different days. I like about this, you can change the reps, you can change the sets, but it makes a very simplistic and yet effective workout strikingly different. That's the main reason why we want to start this show uh, in this live 253 is that He's got a different approach. I've got a vastly different approach, but it's it's always that same end goal. It's always that same end means. It doesn't necessarily have to be bodybuilding. If you look at the sort of broad numbers, just pure statistics, 4% of the US population works out regularly. Regularly is sort of a subjective word, but basically that means more than three days a week. And I mean, Dan's doing five days a week, so he's already of that 4%, he's probably closer to that, that upper echelon of 2%. And then I train roughly the same five to four days a week, again, in the upper echelon. But if you would, if you look at us and as self-diagnosed like people, we're, we're not the top echelon. If you look at people like Phil Heath, I mean like Ronnie Coleman, all these huge people, these, these gods and icons in the industry, these people are the 0.0005% of the entire population because there's 
there's two. There's one person that, that gets the entire crown. And I think you'd probably agree with that too. Yeah, and I mean, like, we're not even competitors. Like we compete with each other, we compete against ourselves. We're not NPC, we're not at all on that level. Those guys, they, they take it up a notch. We're, we're the step in between. We're the, we're the stepping stone that'll get you on stage versus your day one beginners. And that, exactly. that's who we aim to help. Perse I mean, as, as weird as it sounds, the bridge between people who are walking day one in the gym, super intimidated, and the people who are about to step across the stage. Um, and, and with us not being competitors, I, that gives us a little bit more of a broad spectrum sort of view of it. Because one, when you step on stage, that's such a, a huge isolated focus that it's really hard to kind of help out people who are in a completely different situation. Because the main thing you know is that is that one niche community. Um, but I think what it comes down to is, and it's going to be repeated more times than than probably necessary on this first video, is is consistency. And that's what I think is a very good topic to start this first video out on. Because if you're not consistent at something, it's it's not going to stick no matter what you do. Um, and I think training, and I think you'd agree as well, in, in the gym and diet, if, if it's not consistent, you're not going to do it. It's just going to break down. It's going to waste your time and money. Yeah. Well, it's something that I've learned recently. Um, in my time lifting, it, it wasn't probably until the past like year or two that I really understood what consistency is. Um, you know, you want to go out on the weekends and spend time with your family and you take two days off. Well, that's two days that you're, that you're basically wiping out a week's worth of progress. Exactly. So it's, it's consistency is it's huge. It's like showing up to work every day, five days a week, right? Like you get your two days off. But with that being said, those are your rest days. Those are the days that you still eat your meals, still drink your water and try to grow. I mean, that's exactly. And you, and you see that a lot with me being a personal trainer you see the sort of gaps that cause goals to get pushed out. A lot of people will do clean eating five days a week. They're, they got the meal prep, they do the same thing that me and Dan do, the good tendencies of chicken, rice, and vegetables. And then the biggest fallacy that you kind of see within the consistency of fitness is the I deserve something. <laughs> or that's, and that's a huge thing, is oh, treat yourself. That will, that will destroy a trainer if you ever hear that. Because it, like Dan said, it comes down to basically what is your weekly average. If if you're eating super clean five days a week and those last two days on the weekend you go crazy and do five calorie, 5,000 calorie weeks or weekend, that just skewed that whole average and you basically ate worse or you worked out worse and if you skip the weekend and that weekend makes you tired, you didn't drink water, you depleted your nutrition, you're walking in Monday probably a little bit less than you would be, probably guaranteed a little bit less than you would be, which means your Monday workout's garbage, your Tuesday workout's gonna be garbage, and you're always on this basic uphill climb to regather yourself from the two days in which you kind of took off, and it, and it skews that weekly average pretty hardcore. It's it's tough, um, it's tough. We all, we all want social lives, but at the end of the day, you can plan for that, you can pre-plan. Um, you do your six meals a day, and you say that, you know, Tuesday and Friday are going to be your cheat meals. Well, if you work with somebody, as I do in a coach, you turn around and you just say, hey, like Saturday, I got to go to a wedding and he'll work it in for me. So it, there's always ways to be able to make the adjustments to stay within the boundaries, the, to be consistent. Oh, and yeah. it's, a, it's a word you're going to hear me say a million times, but it's a lesson I'm learning right now. Oh, yeah. And I think one thing. Uh, the I know I know it's helped you definitely it's helped me for for the sake of consistency and, and numbers that's I think what we differ on a lot of things numbers are the big thing for I think Dan and myself is would you agree like my fitness pal is probably like revolutionized bodybuilding and, and fitness for for general populations yeah 100% yeah. um, there's a way to be able to track it I think you can go back to the Weight Watchers with the points there's Jenny Craig where we're in an era where there's so much information. I mean, you can you can scan a, a candy bar and see what it has in it. You can scan a chicken breast, see what it has in it. You can portion it out, like what size am I eating? And oh, yeah. it's it's definitely, it's life-changing, it really is. So with, with that consistency and kind of picking back off what he says, Dustin gives him pre-planned cheat days, which again, breeds that consistency. Because if you know it's coming down the pipeline, you can anticipate it. And, and sort of avoid unnecessary cheat days or unnecessary calories. Because again, coming back to those numbers, so in the sake of pre-planning, if, if you know you're gonna be 
inconsistent with your diet or working out you just gotta it and it comes down to a lot like we do we both carry notebooks we both carry stuff with us you got to be able to pre-plan so you know you got a family barbecue on sunday and you're probably going to eat x amount of calories look at your week previous and see if you could subtract maybe something as little as 100 calories from each day which is going to afford you that slight surplus at the end of the week and maybe make that what would be a really detrimental workout or detrimental sort of cheat surplus meal and it could sort of alleviate some of the excess. Well, with that being said, not everybody's necessarily into the weight loss. So for me, like a cheat meal is basically, it's it's going hard in the paint. I mean, oh, yeah. you've eaten with me a few times, you know that when it, when it comes to cheat meal time, I'm gonna hurt. It's uh, my goal is to get bigger, so I, yeah. I eat my cheat meals before I work out. We're talking, you know, a couple hamburgers, and I'm not talking like McDonald's burgers. It's Red Robin. It's Five Guys double cheeseburgers. It's we're seven rolls of sushi. I don't care what I do. It's it's we're we're gonna eat, and that's that's if you're in the growing game, that's the way to go. Yep. Oh yeah, and I could like firsthand attest to the <laughs> sheer volume of food Dan can eat. Um, and that's sort of the other side of the tracks. Um, and you look at Danny, he's a big dude. We both started from very, very slender, humble beginnings. <laughs> and both of our pitchers right here, I mean, that's that's when I started, that's when he started. Uh, and if you look at a picture of us now, since I started seriously lifting, I, I'm up 20 to 30 pounds, but at the very beginning, I mean, I'm up 100 pounds. And, and I mean, Dan's a, a, a monster compared to where he was when he first started. So we're we're on the opposite side of the tracks of, of weight loss. Where obviously, we're trying to gain muscle. Um, and that means getting those numbers. And a lot of people will use the weekend and kill that gains. And, and you'll see them like exactly like today, like Dan brought food here and made me eat a, what is basically a small child because the weekend is when I kind of lose it sometimes too. Um, it, you, you lose track of that consistent timing and meal prep and every two hours. And the weekend gets skewed because the timeline when you wake up is different, when you eat, when you come downstairs to get coffee, it's different. And all that throws into a big chaos and, and you see those big gaps. And that's, that's an issue of mine is, is the gaps of not necessarily going overboard, it's going underboard. Uh, and when you're gaining and when you're on that weight gaining and that muscle pro like progression, that's something that could easily destroy uh, your consistency and your results. Yeah, and it, it, it's tough, but that that the word consistency again and again and again, um, you know, you have to ask yourself what what means the most to you. Um, for some people, it's it's just something they do to stay healthy. They just want to be into general fitness, and that's fine. I don't think it's as important for you guys to stress this point. But if you're goal driven and focused like Josh and I are, then it's. This, I mean, this is what we love to do. This is, you know, we don't have friends. We have the gym. We, we have competition. And it's friendly competition, but it's competition nonetheless. Oh, yeah. And I think that comes down to the 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 adaptation that you bring to fitness. Like, what what is that pinnacle goal? Is it to have the best physique that you possess? Is it trying to compete with someone that's so far out there? Like, let's say you're trying to compete with Phil Heath. That's a, that's a huge, huge goal that's going to require superhuman consistency. <laughs> On a, on a huge daily basis, but but Dan kind of alluded to it. It's, it's For us, it's getting to the best physique possible, getting to the biggest and the strongest physique possible. And your adaptation to fitness needs to align with that. Your The way you sort of go to achieve things has to, if you're trying to be Mr. Olympia, but you're drinking on the weekends and you're skipping workouts and, and, you're, and you're not getting the most out of it, you're never gonna get there. And the same reason is if you're just trying to look good for the summertime and you're just trying to be generally fit, you don't need to have 98% clean nutrition. You don't need to be in the gym seven days a week. You just got to remain healthy and keep that in, in the standard atmosphere of, of where you're going. Goals are are huge and the consistency really has to match those goals. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you'd easily agree with that. Oh, by far. Um, general population, we just, it's consistent. I can't think of another word that describes this action better it's no different than you, if you want money in your bank account you can't save twenty thousand dollars in one week well i mean unless you make that kind of money but yeah. realistically it takes a lot of us putting little bits away and that's essentially what you do when you're driven towards your goal is it's just you're saving a little bit and a little bit and a little bit and soon you have more than vacation money soon soon you have your down payment on your house soon you you have the down payment on two cars what you know whatever it is that you dream of but essentially that's what it comes down to is practice makes perfect and i think that outside of bodybuilding outside of the gym and fitness uh 
we can learn a lot from it. It's it's the reason that it's usually compared to businesses or uh, operating businesses and sports. Um, they go hand in hand because it takes the same type of attitude. It's it's really a driven, well thought out, well practiced, yep. and consistent event. Oh yeah, I'd, I'd hugely agree with that. I think you could really make the argument that when you look at someone and they have a really impressive physique and, and not necessarily just huge like a monster, but they're shredded, you can kind of inherently look at them and, and without even talking to them, know that they have the dedication, they got the drive, when they set a goal, they're gonna get to it. And you can almost make a pre-assumption that you know a little bit about them before you know them. And I think with fitness, that's that's huge. And what it definitely applies to business because someone walks in for an interview and they, they look nicely dressed, they have a good shape, they take care of themselves. Automatically, you have a series of checks in a box that that, that person is going to be standardly better than that person walking in who doesn't care about their appearance. That is perhaps not that overweight's a bad thing, but doesn't take care of their health and isn't in the same sort of consistent ballpark as that person. Is it kind of gives you a leg up on things outside the gym? You, I'm I'm honestly scared to put a puzzle together with Phil Heath in the same room because I believe that he would be that much better than me. Not because I think that he's superior somehow, but the amount of discipline that he has is it's extraordinary it's it's otherworldly so you know the patience the to be able to put that puzzle together the the thoughts to see what needs to happen the kinks in the wheels this guy's going to put a puzzle better to, better together than you can or i can because he's practiced it i mean yep. at least he will try i mean i'll challenge philly to a puzzle contest anytime <laughs> Phil, I know you're watching because you're like a huge subscriber of the channel, uh, but we got a challenge for you. No, probably not going to happen, but I, I, but I think it really rings true because a lot of people have this sort of negative connotation with, with fitness and, and especially bodybuilders in the industry that if you work out a lot and you take care of your body, you're, you're a lunk. Which, yep. I mean, you see with, there's a lot of gyms like 24 Hour Fitness and Planet Fitness where you, you walk into those areas and you're a lunk. They think that since you take care of your body and, and you're into fitness, that you're you're a box of rocks. And I think what is exactly the point of this channel is to sort of dispel that. It's you got the consistency, you, you're putting in the work, you're goal driven, you're you're an athlete, that it's trying to slowly scrub away those negative connotations and sort of shed a better light on people who who put a lot in their physiques and put the time in. Although there is what you would probably agree to be a little bit of a sacrifice on free time and, and friendship that if, if that's the goal for you in that long run, that short-term sacrifice, two people who know what you have sacrificed is going to mean a thousand-fold better than having some Instagram pictures and a few memories of you getting wasted with some of your friends out in the club. And then you typically don't even remember the night. Um... Was it worth it? I mean, we've all had some of those nights. Sure, they're fun to talk about, but I'm a little bit older than than you. I'm I'm 33. Uh, I don't have time for that. I don't. I have goals. I have timelines to meet. Um, and with that comes back down to discipline and consistency. And it's yep. it's basically discipline over habits. You know, it's it's like you have to do it regardless of what aspect it is. Um, I hope that I hope that everybody you know can can achieve their goal physique, and I, I want to be able to help everybody achieve yeah. that physique. Uh, am I the guy that's going to make you Mr. Olympia? No, I'm I'm not a guru. I'm I'm not a legend. But what I can tell you is that if there was one thing that I listened to from day one, I wish I would have listened to the fact that you got to eat six meals a day. Um, it, that's huge. It's huge. Uh, getting your metabolism going, whether it's for weight loss or weight gain. Don't be scared of cardio if you're a bodybuilder, guys. Like that's that's a huge oh, yeah. myth. I do I do hit cardio five days a week. Um, there's no reason to avoid that. Um, go take a look at my Instagram. Josh will put it in the link below. Um, we can go ahead and you know make the comparisons, but you can see my progress over the years, and it, it'll go to show you that over the past year, year and a half, I, I've developed a lot faster than I did in my beginner gains phase because back to the keyword consistency and that's the name of this episode oh yeah for sure let's like get like a running tally of how many times we've said it um but i think what, what it really comes down to is we're the, we're the middlemen we're the people who hopefully if you aspire to be better than us or maybe to even just our level um we're the people that you, you need to listen to and that's a huge thing i wish i would have done when i first started even even now me and dan will be talking about something um, and he knows how stubborn I could be. He'll be 
Because I mean, he's been in the same circles, and it's really easy to be like, I'm just gonna do it my own way. I'm gonna do it how I've how I've done it. it it's comfortable. I, I like what I'm doing, and and it does take someone who's been maybe a little bit further than you're willing to go, or into a different space. They like, hey, you if if you're trying to go somewhere where you've never been, and he says it all the time, you gotta be willing to do stuff you've never done, and that comes into getting out of your comfort zone with rep ranges, switching the style of lifting, maybe listening to a uh, group of guys, two schmuckaroonies who have been a little bit further than you uh, and, and kind of listening to these things and be like, oh, maybe I do need to listen uh, to some people who have been through the grind to get a little bit ahead of where I'm going. And that's the same thing we do. I mean, I listen to like Mark Lobliner and, and, and big both of us are yeah. big fans of like Mark Bell. Um, people who are higher than we want to be and you really got to mirror them and listen to them. And, and it's one of those things like if you mimic the success of others, you will succeed better than they do. And that's just one of those things where if, if that consistently happens over and over, you're gonna get further than they are at that point because you know more than they did at that point. And that's something I think you'd probably easily agree on too. Well, one thing that, that we have out of you and I on this channel, the community, is is we have accountability. I you I send you, you know, snapshots out post workout, I'll send you you know, hey, this this is where I'm at today. It, you have somebody to hold you accountable to say, you know, hey, get your head out of your ass. You know, you just yeah. quit quit pouting, go get it done. Hey, you know, Dan, you're doing great. Like you you look like you your delts have gotten bigger. Whatever. Like you have somebody there to be able to tell you when you're doing something right, but you also have somebody there to hold you accountable when oh, you're yeah. doing something wrong. Yep. And that that's a hard part. I mean, if you guys can find somebody to work out with, or even if you don't actually directly work out with them, but somebody that you can have, you know, a good friend and build a relationship off that, that's awesome because the accountability is another factor that goes back with consistency. Discipline, consistency, accountability. It's, yep. it, it's, it's just discipline. That's oh, yeah. It, it boils, I mean, they're all, all those words are very synonymous with each other. To take away one really voids all the other ones. Um, and I, I think one thing that we could finish today's video off with is that consistency is huge um, and kind of looped into that is like drive and motivation. So to, to, to kind of end it off, what, how do you find motivation? Like, is there videos? Is there people? What's, what's your token to get you motivated? That way, when these people watch this entire video and they get to this point and, and they're, they're liking what they're hearing, that they can go maybe take a look at who gives you motivation, get into that light, and then maybe progress that much further. So what's, what's your source of motivation? Oh, my motivation. Um, I have a great one for you, and I'm going to steal yours, which is Matthew McConaughey, but when you said it, it made sense. My motivation is me in five years. And you ask me again in five years, it's going to be me in another five years. Yep. And ask me then, it'll be me in another five years. I will never settle. I will never strive to be content with where I'm at. If I, if I gave up bodybuilding today... I would go be the greatest businessman that I could possibly be. Hopefully a CEO of multiple multi-million dollar businesses. I mean, that's my motivation comes from myself. Like I, I, I get gratification off of seeing my own success. Yep. So, Oh, uh, I, 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 full, I mean, I full heartedly agree. Cause he says he stole that from me. Cause he definitely did. Uh, it's, it's just one of those things where to be better than yourself by five years and to always seek that person, you, cause you never want to really fully idolize someone else because you you're not in their steps you're not in their life and and to fully mimic and, and mirror it to it it just it won't turn out as well as you think it will so to match your person to match you in five years and always want to get to that person who's always better than you just out of that reach i think that's a huge thing um and i'm actually going to inversely steal something that that gives me a lot of motivation and and that definitely as of recently uh has made like a huge impact and that's something that dan tells me all the time and for my younger viewers out there, you gotta plug your ears. Um, but one thing that, that gives me huge motivation is, is when you look at yourself and you realize where you're going at and you just kinda have to stop, take a breath and tell yourself to stop believing the bull story you're telling yourself. And and it sounds so quick to say to you, and you kinda realize it and it's it's very easy to kinda take it back and be like, what? But you just gotta, you just gotta realize yourself, oh, I don't have time to eat. You, you do have time to eat, but you're not prioritizing eating or I, I just can't make it in the gym, like I don't have the time. Again, you got the time, but you're believing this BS story that you're telling yourself and you're just reprioritizing. The second you can give yourself an out, you're always going to take that out. It's just how it is. And I think that's a huge motivation thing for myself is to, to hold yourself accountable and, and to link up with the community exactly like ours, go onto social media, 
make your goal, declare it out loud mm -hmm. on Twitter. Cause, cause rest assured, and, we, and we've seen this time and time again, where you say you're gonna get to a goal and you don't, there's always gonna be that one person that says you didn't get that goal, you said you were gonna, what's going on? And, and that community is gonna hold you accountable and you're gonna hold yourself accountable cause you got a story you're writing and it, the second you start to believe that BS side of it, it's just gonna make that book longer and longer and you're never gonna get to that end page. But is there any any closing argument? Uh, my closing argument is simply you're your own author to that story. And yep. with that being said, you you can basically change your own destiny just by just by taking the first step. Fitness, business. I, I don't care if you want to be the best pea farmer. Just do it. Yep. Just just research it. Figure out what you need to do and take action. Exactly. Blanket blanket that goal out, and no matter what it is, drive head first towards it, giving it your everything. And if you fail redirecting something else if bodybuilding is not your thing you never know on that path to bodybuilding you come across a smoothie stand and you become the best smoothie stand in the nation something something like that you just got to give it your everything yep. really appreciate you guys being here for the first live 253 all be that it wasn't live rest, <laughs> <laughs> rest assured we will get the technical difficulties figured out that way you can see how awkward we are in live and <laughs> and it's it's going to get awkward again really appreciate you guys for coming along dan thanks for being here he's going to be the co-host He's gonna be here. Ask your questions, leave a comment, question, or concern yep. in the section below. If you guys want your question answered on the next video, we're gonna pull it all up during our live streams, answer your guys' questions right then and there so you guys can get to the bottom of it. Again, thanks for watching everybody. Take it easy.